decide on certain matters and make plans. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So, here, Curran, here, really. Here. Harrison. Here. Hinkleman. Here. Majeric. Here. Uh, Pittsford. Present. Ballrath. Here. Orful. Here. Yarbrough. Present. Elliot. Here. We have one absent. Thank you. Minutes from the 28th of March need to be approved. Moved by Pittsford. Second. Supported by Majeric. Discussion. Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Approved. We have two. Uh, one communication from the Michigan State Housing Development Authority announcing the launch of Michigan Neighborhood, a new statewide housing grant opportunity received on April 1st, 2024. Second communication from the Women's Business Center at Cornerstone Alliance announcing the ribbon, ribbon cutting open house for the grand opening of the new Stone Gate Wellness and Weight Management on April 12th, 2024 at 3 p.m. received April 2nd. Thank you. We're now at the point where we'll receive comments on resolutions. That would be anything listed on the agenda, including I think there's one added resolution that ends in 4178. If you have anything you'd like to say about those, now is the time. Again, limited just two resolutions. <laughs> Um, hearing no comments, we can proceed with the consent agenda. My understanding is four resolutions on the consent panel. I'll make that motion. Support. Current support by Bell. Any discussion? Ma'am. Point of clarity, uh, 4178 is the Love Creek, um, and the honorary resolution is 4024. That's what I meant. Uh, okay, we're, we're pulling 4024. Right. Thank you. And I'm guessing that that was the motion by Curran as supported by Bell was to approve everything except 4024, which right. we're reserving for. For individual attention. That's what you meant, right? Because that's what I meant. Gray, is that okay? All right. So that's what we're voting on. Any further discussion? Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll? Curran. Yes. Freeling. Yes. Harrison. Yes. Ingleman. Yes. Jarrett. Yes. Pittsburgh. Yes. Ballrath. Yes. Whirlpool. Yes. Yarbrough. Yes. 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 Elliot. Yes. Now. The resolution ending in 4024. Is there a motion to approve that resolution? So made. Moved by Pitchford. Is there support? Okay. Supported by Harrison. Uh, is there a discussion? Um, we, uh, I think, we need to read it before we vote on it. Yes, sir. Who wants to read it? Ma'am. <laughs> I thank you all so much. I thank you, Commissioner. Um, Pittsburgh for suggesting, and I thank you all for signing. And this is my neighbor, um, Berrien County Board of Commissioners Resolution B2404024, honoring Richard Hunt, April 4th, 2024. Whereas Richard Howard Hunt was born in Chicago, Illinois, on September 12, 1935, and ultimately became one of the most successful metal sculptors in the world. And whereas he was the inaugural artist in the economic and civic program, community renewal through the arts, and in 1995, Hunt established a satellite studio in the Benton Harbor Arts District. And whereas he gave generously 
of his time and had an active presence in the community. And when asked why Benton Harbor, he was quoted as saying, there's every reason to come to Benton Harbor. It's a land of opportunities. And whereas with the opening of his studio, Standard was purchased and subsequently donated to the Craslow Arts Center in St. Joseph, where it remains today. And whereas his work can be seen throughout the United States and abroad, but most notably are the pieces right here in Marion County. Hybrid form number two in Niles, 1974. And you see installed at Silver Beach County Park, 2002. Silver Linings at Lakeland Medical Center, St. Joseph, 2008. Rising Crossing Tides at the entrance to Crazel Arts Center, St. Joseph, 2018. And whereas he is represented in more than 100 public museums across the globe and rightfully deserves to be identified as one of the nation's greatest artists. And whereas in the spring of 2023, he gifted his 26,000 square foot satellite studio in Benton Harbor to the community via the Crazel Arts Center with only a minimal request that it remain rooted in the arts and be an active, vibrant resource to the greater Benton Harbor community. And whereas Richard Howard Hunt passed away peacefully on Saturday, December 16, 2023, now therefore be it hereby resolved that the Berrien County Board of Commissioner honors a friend to our community, Richard Howard Hunt, for being one of the nation's greatest artists and expresses their gratitude for his generous nature and his contributions for the betterment of Berrien County. Be it further resolved and in alignment with the state of Illinois and others, the board designates April 24th as Richard Howard Hunt Day and encourages the citizenry to surround themselves in the arts in honor of him. Respectfully submitted Berrien County Board of Commissioners and we've all signed it. And I thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Been... Thank you. And I must say, I think Annette, is she in here? Oh, well, I think Annette for all the work and whatever she did and got it together, was in touch with the Krasl. I brought some things, she does a beautiful job with the resolutions and I'll be proud to present this on this Saturday at a public opening at the Richard Hunt Center from 4.30 to seven. I hope you all, if you have a chance to drop in and then I hope later on there will be reasons to come to the Richard Hunt for a lesson or, or something or an Very exhibit. Thank you. Very good, thank you. Before we call the roll, yes, sir. Uh, just adding on to Commissioner Yarborough, I want to thank Michael Boy. He brought this to the board, came across multiple weeks to make sure that this was on our radar. So great job, Michael. Thank you for bringing this to us and congratulations. Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll? Freeling. Yes. Harrison. Yes. Kinkleman. Yes. Majeric. Yes. Pittsburgh. Yes. Laura. Yes. Corporal. Yes. Yarborough. Yes. Bell. Yes. Current. Yes. And Elliot. Yes. Thank you. And thank you, Mamie. Thank you. Uh, committee reports, admin. Thank you, Mac. <clears throat> we had uh, our Sheriff Chuck Height and Under Sheriff Greg Sanders in to see us this morning. And Commissioner Volrath would like to report out on that. Thank you, Jim. Um, thank our Sheriff Chuck and his uh, Under Sheriff this morning for meeting with us. Um, you should have a copy of this sheriff's report from Peggy, but I'll go over a couple of things that made uh, st stood out to me. Um, we've been under the jail population exceeding the capacity for a long time now, and we're not just below it. For many months, we were, I think the capacity is 340. We were in the 330s for a long time. We've been at or below 300 for quite a while now, so I think that's a, that's a good thing, and it reflects in, the, I think, a lot of the numbers that we look at. Um, we're serving less meals by a couple thousand by, with fewer um, inmates. The medical services uh, company, um, it shows 495 on-site clinical visits, which when I saw that first thing early this morning, that number <laughs> jumped out at me, but it includes all the nurse visits and things that weren't included before. Um, the new company has a different reporting system that there's a few changes to that. So some of those things will 
uh, look a little bit different for a while. Um, Chuck did tell us that the prescription costs for the first quarter at the jail were down $92,000. Um, that could be attributed a lot to the, you know, fewer inmates as well. Um, so keep that in mind. And the naloxone vending machine only distributed 43 kits. We've been giving out 70 to 80 a month for quite a while. So, I mean, that number is way down as well. Um, everybody got to see the, um, our new toy last week, the big monster down at the, you know, it's, should be, should be a great service to us when needed and hope to God it's not soon. Um, the sheriff's department is busy. There's a lot of planning it goes into the senior PGA. It's going to be the last year of that. I believe it's the sixth, sixth one. And right now they're not having, there's no plans to have any more after this year um, here in Benton Harbor. But um, you never know when that's going to come back in the future. It's they, They're still going to play it every year someplace. So um, you just never know. But I know there's months and months of meetings and things because there's a lot of areas you just don't understand how many you've got thousands of volunteers, you've got tens of thousands of visitors and people out there. Um, it takes a lot to keep that under control and, and know what to do when things happen because they come up so fast and they've got to have all that. And then they've been meeting monthly and, and um, I know it's all appreciated over there at uh, Harbor Shores. So that's about my report for today. And uh, Thanks Dave. We have no resolutions, so that's our report. Questions for admin? All right, uh, Mr. Chair of PHS. I, due to my absence, Mr. Majerik will give the report. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we had uh, no resolutions, and uh, we had Lori Freeling, the Registry of Deeds. Uh, she does wonderful work uh, keeping our records, and Commissioner Pitchford would like to talk about that. Thank you, Mike. Uh, the Register of Deeds came in and gave us the highlights, the annual report for 2023. Number one, she talked about the plat board, which was just interesting to kind of understand that it's a combination of the clerk, the treasurer, and the Register of Deeds created by state statute that oversees everything from like subdivision developments, and they come to them to get final approval. Talked about the team, some of the new hires that they have, great team atmosphere, Cheryl Schreiner, who's new and was told that she's doing an excellent job working with the Register of Deeds. There were 24,000 documents indexed and approximately 24,000 verified in 2023, which was 48,000 altogether. Total receipts for 2023, as in revenue brought in, $9,562,166, which, as I was told in the in the meeting, they make a profit in this department, and it's something that is, is known that this department brings in money more than it spends. Over the last five-year trend for the Register of Deeds, 2019 was 8.2 million, 2020 was 10.8 million, 2021 was 13 million, 2022 was 11.2 million, and then 2023 is 9.5 million. So a bit of a, a curve there, but still doing extremely well. Talked about a really cool program that they have, if a document comes in that statutorily could not be recorded because of the condition of the document, whether it's stained, something of that nature, they can upload it into their system and completely remove the stain and make the document workable. So if you, it might be in your inboxes already on page nine, there's a document where they show that it was stained as it was received. And by the time it was cleaned up by the LRMS system, it was completely ready to be recorded. And I think that's just a testament to where technology is going and making this job a lot easier for the Register of Deeds and their staff to be able to do. The last thing I want to point out is the percentage of e-recordings, electronically recording documents is up at 68%, 68% of the documents that they received in 2023. So 25,170 recorded, 16,272 of them were e-recorded. So most of the report they have the property alert system which we all got a little handout about it's a, a great resource if you want to know more about what's being registered and if it fits any criteria that you're looking for specifically whether it's your house your your numbers things of that nature so that is my report and then we had chairman elliot come in discuss a few things with us and that's pretty much our report questions for phs Madam Chair of Finance. Thank you. Thank you. Um, 
our uh, chairman, Mac Elliott, came in to talk with us Q&A. And what we talked about was more about meat, um, which was brought up this morning in our community, committee of the whole. And it was wonderful to have that amount of time to be able to talk. And this meat, when I first heard uh, Commissioner Freeling say it, I thought it was about the school test that you take. It used to be something, you know, that was me. And no, that's not what it was. And what it is is Michigan Agricultural and Environmental Assurance Program. And, and when they were talking about uh, the farmers are for it, but being voluntary, not mandatory, turning into a whole nother um, something over them, um, mandates without financing, or if I hope I'm saying it right. Mm -hmm. um, and so what uh, we learned in the conversation was that um, there are, uh, there's a resolution that can be done. It's been done, done by uh, other counties and things. And so our chairperson is going to look into it and see what we can get going to, to make that happen and pass it around to more farmers because it is a detriment when you have to pay, have to do something and pay for it yourself. That's required from on high, not that high. Uh, you know, <laughs> somewhere there. Um, so it was a very good conversation and I know now, now know what MEEP is. Um, then uh, we had a resolution and that was to pay the bills, the road department and our regular bills. Um, the minutes were approved. Um, we had a bid um, and it was from the road department and it was for bridge inspections. And um, we had a projected cost of $65,000. The uh, request for bids was sent out to 10 bidders and two responded. One was Great Lakes Engineering Group at the Harbor, Michigan. And their total amount that they bid it was $73,750. The next uh, company was Spicer Group. Byron Center, Michigan, and their bid was $40,923. We have um, a special motion that we make when it's when um, bids come in about accepting the lowest bid if it meets the specifications or coming back to the committee with it if, it, if that's not so. And so that is the motion that we made and it's gone on now to the road department. Um, I was trying to see. Oh, uh, we have board appointments and uh, and that will bring those to us next week. So there are a number of, um, and, and she'll let us know what they are because we, she really says she only has one application. So if you know of people that would be interested in applying for different boards that we have, it's good to have a number of people that are interested that can be called on. So let, uh, let her know, give her some names or ask some people so we can build up a, a bank for that. And any other things? That's the end of my report. Questions to finance? Okay, commissioner reports and we'll go clockwise. Report. I attended the health board meeting yesterday as well as the groundbreaking um, for the Marquette Greenway Trailhead in New Buffalo. And with me was also Commissioner Elliott and Commissioner Curran. That concludes my report. report. No report. I attended um, last week after our meeting, the land bank meeting, and uh, I think, yeah, that's my report. Report. No report. I forgot. Oh. <laughs> My mic was off when I said that. Just so you know. <laughs> okay. Um, yes, we were at Market Greenway, uh, Bob and Jim and I, and I had to cut out. I had to go to South Bend, and I saw the Palladium this morning. I don't know if you've seen it, but. Bob's press agent has come through admirably for him. He's prominently shown there with a shovel in hand on the front page. So it was a really a nice gathering. Would have been wonderful if we had good weather, but it was cold and it was that kind of cold that penetrates because it was damp, wet, cold, but all for a good cause. 
Um, we don't have an administrator report because Brian's on vacation. So now we will go to general public comments and uh, you have two minutes. Name in town, name in town if you wish to opine. If it's me again, Dr. Hager Township. I got a comment to make about the meeting we had last week. As far as I'm concerned, there was an illegal meeting. We had too many people in this room. Why didn't, why didn't you put some of the chairs over there? There's plenty of room right there. No, we all had to be here, out there, and in the hall. Now, don't we have a building inspector that puts down a this is a good classroom, right? I thought I had about 20 kids in here, little, little kids with a teacher and maybe somebody else. So what do we have in there? I have over 150 people even out there. That's another reason you should have a decent room. You go to go to the city of St. Joe, they will be able to accommodate all those people. Now, I want somebody who must be a building inspector or something. Come in here and put us, I'm gonna see a sign up there. Maximum number of people in here, 165 or whatever. And you guys should stick with it. You're not, you think you're above the law or something, make up your own rules. You know, you go to go to, go to a VA or go to a meeting or something, you might have a sign up there. It'll say, Maximum so many people. Well, not you guys. No, we're above the law. We make the law. So we're, you can't touch me. I asked if I can go complain to somebody. Oh, no, no, you won't tell me who it is. But, uh, you, no wonder they call you a crook, thief, liar, scum. Look at, look at the stuff that's going on in Washington. No, you guys are starting out here, and pretty soon some of you are going to go here or here. And you're going to start reaping some of those rewards up there. Those guys are nuts up there. You should have a budget and you stick with it. No, they got to make a law to ask me for my opinion or my vote. I said, well, you give me some money. No, not necessarily money. That's Good the way everything works. Thank you, Mr. Peltzer. Goodbye. Anyone else wish to be heard? <laughs> Yes, sir. Name in town, name in town. Uh, Michael Hoy, City of Benton Harbor. Um, as the ambassador to Richard Hunt Day, I'd like to thank this commission for uh, honoring that day. And uh, it will set a precedence that as this rolls out to go into a national Richard Hunt Day, that Berrien County is the first actual county outside of Illinois that has actually recognized Richard Hunt. And some of the things that I'm finding out about Richard is um, back in the 90s, Jeff Knoll and Dave Whitbaum got together and gave Richard a bunch of parts from Whirlpool. And Richard made a piece called the Eagle. And we've located it. And it's actually in Brandywine at their retreat. And I'm going to go up there tomorrow to take pictures of it because nobody really knows it has seen it. So it's an award that Whirlpool gives out. Also, things that we're learning is that in Harlem, when Richard did a piece in the 70s. It's outside of a school. And as they were painting the school, they painted the Richard Hunt piece because, again, there's people that just don't know his story and things of that nature. And that's what, you know, this day is all about is recognizing Richard Hunt and who he actually um, has con contributed to the to the arts. Also, um, if you're ever watching the White House, Richard has a piece at the White House. It's in the Rose Garden and it's called The Farmer. And it's uh, it's kind of cool sometimes when you're watching um, press out there with the president, you can actually see the piece that he did. It's called The Farmer, and it recognizes the farmers in agriculture. So I just want to say thank you so much. I'm sorry, there it is right there. It's called The Farmer. And it right, it, sometimes if you'll catch it when they do a big span back of um, before the president comes out, you'll see the piece sitting around outside in the Rose Garden. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else wish to be heard? All right. We'll close general public comments. Go to other business. Is there any? Anyone have any announcements or reminders? Ma'am. Um, BCBIT does not meet this Thursday. It meets next Thursday because there's a number of staff that help in that meeting that are gone due to spring break. All right. It's uh, according to the clock on the wall, 10, going on 1057. My watch says 1055 and 30 seconds. 
We are adjourned to Thursday next at 8.35. Have a good weekend.